In this episode of Lazarus, there are references to drug abuse, self-harm, and suicide. If any of these things trigger you, I would not recommend listening to the half of this episode that takes place post mid -roll. That being said, this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, events, businesses, and incidents are the products of the creator's imagination. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events, is purely coincidental. Dearest James, Laurel and I have received the confirmation of our selection to be a part of your God-blessed town. I just wanted to thank you personally for the kindness you've shown my family. Ever since Irene passed, we've been struggling to get by. Though we count our meager blessings every day. My daughter is the kindest, most wonderful individual you will ever meet. And she is going to turn out some special way living in that sanctuary you are building. Though, with this mining position that you've offered me, I can't help but regret the fact that I will be so far away from her during the day. It spurs thoughts of all the terrible things that could happen not being by her side. Even yet, if faith has gotten me this far in life, then it may very well carry me through the rest of it. Faithfully, Larry Player. gentlemen and welcome back to lazarus a storytelling monster of the week podcast the monster of the week part being something that we've never really gone too in depth on in our time we've sort of included the mechanics but never really took the time to sort of explain what we're doing here or marketed ourselves as a ttrpg podcast in general um so consider this a pseudo rebrand <laughs> um with me here, I have my two players. Uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. No. Oh, uh, hi. Um, cool. Hi, I'm cool. Quentin's mom. Um, wait, no, please don't include that. She listens to this. Um, <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> she, she doesn't? Does, she, she does not. Yes, she no, does. No, she doesn't. Are you no. kidding me? No, I she distinctly doesn't. remember her being like, <laughs> I love the show, but do you guys have to start. curse so much? She's like... Maybe she listened to the first episode ever that was like a year ago. Welcome back to episode nine, by the way. We've made nine of these in a year and a half. All right. We're, we're really good. We're really good at this. Oh, yeah. That's um, almost one a month. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's a very, uh, actually not. That's three whole months. <laughs> almost. <we're>, Yippee. Oh. <laughs> we needed a mental health break. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Uh, hi, I'm Bella Roberts, certified clown. D hey. Um, <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Artie. Uh, I'm I'm also here. Mhm. Mm what are you certified in? Um, I'd say being a part of this podcast. I'm certified in that. That's great. Mm-hmm. 
There is no official certification to be part of this podcast. You need no skills, no nothing. You're <laughs> the only one without a badge, Quentin. I'll say this. Uh, my name is Quentin Small, and uh, these guys uh, don't don't in fact play characters. They don't they don't play characters in True. at all in the slightest. They are just playing themselves this time. If if you're on episode nine and you don't know our characters, are you a real fan? Okay, well, someone might be checking out this episode just to, like, oh. see and get a feel for it. We, maybe we should... Yeah, that's true. We should introduce and sort of give them a clean listening experience. So if you guys want to if you guys wanna introduce your characters and tell us what they're all about, you know. Go first. All right. Well, um, my character is Oliver, um, more likely known... To, to most of you as Digby Bush and um he's he's an older man um in not very old he's in his 60s around that um a little grumpy but kind of a pushover um he writes books on the side um none of them are very popular he I should say he writes books about his endeavors and um None are really quite believed. How about how about Mary? Um, how about Mary? What <laughs> what do we say about her? Um, Mary is a fifteen year old girl who is currently having a crisis of identity, and occasionally hears voices. Not, Not the, the good kind. kind. There's a very bad man living in her head. That's. That's a good, that's another good Thank summary. You. I practiced. All right, so now you guys, you guys know exactly what we're about. I'm going to have to cut around this so, so poorly because it's never taken us <laughs> six minutes to do an intro we before. We don't do intros. Um, that's not our brand. I want to start doing intros, you know? I want to, I want to give this sort of like a, a general formula. A, a f- How does Plankton say the word formula in fucking Spongebob? Formular. <laughs> he says it like formula with an R, but I don't know. A crabby he, like, patty formula. No, that's that's. He uh, does not that's say Mr. it. Like that's crabs. fucking uh, crabs. That's crabs. He says formula with an R. He like drags out the form in the formula. Formula. For I feel like. True. 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 Yeah, we've we've spent enough time on on this. Uh, mm-hmm. let's, let's get right into the action. So, where we start off, our characters are sitting around the site of last episode's expedition, the Nirvana Quarry. Your characters had fought the Wendigo that had haunted your lives for a weird amount of time since time travel was involved and came out victorious. However, emerging from this cavern, you noticed that your companion, Barkin, was gone. Upon further investigation, you discovered Barkin's body on top of a cliffside in the quarry with his arm ripped from its socket, laying five feet away from where the body rests, and written out in blood, I will never forgive you. So I have a couple of questions for you, my dear players. What would Digby and Mary have done with the body of Barkin? Well, seeing as there's not any really good space here for a a burial what do you say about putting him back in the cave yeah i mean it's it's underground it's the most respectful thing i think we can do given the circumstances all right so um digby and mary would have dumped his body back down in the cave is that is that right? Would you have done anything special to it? Well, we wouldn't we wouldn't just dump it. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't toss him in there. 
We had some respect for the man. Yeah, no, 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 no. We take a we take a short little hike over the coffin shop and grab yeah. a, a nice wooden <laughs> casing at fucking midnight on a Tuesday. Yeah, but we're not yeeting his body down into the like. That's not okay. By the way, we're still injured, right? Oh, very, very, very much. Oh, how are we getting him down? Because we got jacked. Want to try uh, dragging him? What other option do we have, all right? It's something we could make, like, one of those things that doctors carry people in. Uh, I mean, yeah. So how do you figure you're going to make one of We're these? We're just dragging him. We're, I think that's the only option. Just dragging him? Are you dragging him by the feet or his one remaining? Why are we focusing so much on this? <laughs> I, um, <laughs> by his ears. Let's, let's, go, let's go with the feet. Okay, the feet. Just for for. Or like you could grab his feet, and I can grab him by like his shoulder arm area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The uh left socket is gushing blood. Um, still sort of at a at a at a constant rate. Well, not at a constant rate. It's sort of just dripping a little bit. So if you do want to pick him up by like the shoulder, just just know that it could get a little bit. A little bit, a little bit slippery. Mary turns and looks at the imaginary camera and goes, I'm not afraid of blood. How about just picking up him up by the one arm? Yeah, that works. You get him by the legs, and Mary, you get him by the one arm, and his torso kind of, like, flops <laughs> to the side that isn't being supported. So it's kind of this awkward angle where his body is being dragged down by gravity, but also you, you've got a pretty good hold on him. Um, so he's just kind of like flopping around in the wind uh, and you bring him all the way down to the mouth of the cave where uh, you guys continue to bring him down, I, I, I guess. And uh, eventually you're in that same sort of chamber that you were in last episode. Mary, do you think this is, this is a good spot? I don't really think I can go much I, farther. I I guess, uh, yeah, this will work. This is fine. Okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, set him down right here. Slowly. She drops him. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him just go thunk. Mary, what did I tell you? I, I have... So that's, that is the side that his head is sort of uh, on... So you can hear kind of like a crack as it connects with the stone. I've never, I've never right. had to carry a dead body before. Fair, fair point. Um, I let's. If anyone comes across him, uh, it, it's he. He's already just not in good shape. It, it it's fine. He's dead. Uh, let's at least put him in a somewhat respectable pose. There's one arm over his chest, maybe, or over his stomach, legs straight. We should not cross them, have him splayed be out. a little dapper. You should uh, put a pair of sunglasses on him. Ooh, that's a good idea. I don't think we have any sunglasses on us, do we? I don't. For, for the bit's sake. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want to use your skill. <laughs> if you <want> to... <laughs> I, I think Diggory's going to hold off okay. on that. Um, no, but his, his sort of fishy amphibian corpse lays there. You can, you can see the look on his face, his dying visage isn't one of terror, but more of surprise. Um, of course it could be a little bit, you know, uh, changed from the fact that he was just dropped on his skull. That might have shifted a couple of facial features around a little bit, but you can you can get the impression that whatever attack was enacted on him, it was one of of stealth and surprise. And as you guys sort of prop his body up in a in a makeshift pose, uh, you also smell something, uh, sort of like a like a sweet smell coming from behind you. Well, um. 
Digby's going to turn around. You can see the corpse of the Wendigo, um, its head fully gone, um, leaking this black liquid all over the ground. Um, But as you look at it, uh, you guys are in this completely dark chamber. Uh, The way that I described it last episode is having this hole that leads down from the very surface that sort of shines moonlight this pin shaped hole very thin but it shines this moonlight overhead and you can see as the moonlight refracts on the black blood um it has this refractal multicolored gleam to it and uh digby you would recognize the same sort of multicolored gleam um from the teardrop that you received back in the Schaefer estate. I'm assuming any, like, containment, like, uh, like, um, I, I'm pretty sure that anything like that could have been, like, shma- smashed, <laughs> smashed up in the previous encounter. But, like, I'm thinking I could spend the expert moves to produce something. Uh, I will also remind you that Barkin had near his person a like six gallon pail that they used for the gasoline ah okay you could you could use that for something um individually uh the flamethrower is pretty much empty uh but you still have all of those propane containers that were used to fuel it um and you do still have a small vial on hand um that when you do look at it, it is a little bit smashed at the bottom. Okay. Mary, um, I, I will be right back. Digby leaves. What? <laughs> what? Uh, Mary, I, I'm, I'll, I will be back in. No, fuck you. I'm going with you. D- do not use that language with me. Okay. <laughs> Fine, fine, fine. You. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. I, I, I'm just getting the pail that Barkin used. I have something I want you, to you in, want? inspect. What? You yeah. want to bring a goodie bag from the pseudo funeral? What? You're going to take the pail uh-huh. and take shit from the corpses. Well, well, not Barkin's corpse, just the, the Wendigo. It was a living person at some point. Okay, well, it's not right now. I, I, I need this. This is important. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm going. <sighs> Fine. All right, Digby's walking out of the cave in order to retrieve that. Pale. All right. I mean, you find it easily enough. Uh, it's just sitting up there. Uh, you can see it was knocked on its side, um, and it's leaking the gasoline uh, that initially led you to the discovery of his corpse, the one that had mixed with the blood. And what you can tell is there's still a little gasoline in there, um, but given how you saw his blood not mix with the gasoline but just sort of separate initially you would figure that it shouldn't be much of a problem to sort of collect the same from the wendigo unless it has different properties inherently well that can be figured out once digby tries to collect them yeah he's gonna pick it up and bring it back down so you pick it up bring it back down um and you have it uh, I would say this this blood is leaking out of um, wounds that are scattered across the body, uh, these these sort of inherent tears uh, that happen during the initial mutation, um, and then also a large amount is just sort of being, it, it almost feels like it's being generated um, from the head wound. Okay. Um, Digby's going to place the bucket, or the pail or whatever, right under that head. Um, eventually, uh, after waiting for like two ish minutes, um, the pail is 
decently full. It, it gets to the point where it gets like a little bit hard to to move. You can you can see that this stuff like congeals. Uh, it's thick and viscous. Huh. Uh, you have about like two gallons right now. All right, Digby is gonna like pour like half a gallon out of there. Um, he doesn't need that much, and it's a little too much to carry given his state, his current physical All right. state. Uh, is there anything like um? There's nothing else around the corpse, right? It's just Barkin, the Wendigo, and us two in the room. Uh, pretty much. And to your right, you didn't notice this during the initial confrontation. Um, but it there is the site of what appears to be like a cave in, um, with a bunch of human bones scattered around. And then to your left, uh, there is also a passageway that that moves forward. Uh, deeper into this cave but there is no light to be to be seen or spoken of okay uh it's probably not a wise idea to check that out right now nope uh mary do you have anything you want to say maybe i look i i i barkin didn't deserve this it's kind of a rough way to go yeah i mean uh, i don't know you were living in his house so which i am very thankful for he much too generous i kind of i kind of just want to go <laughs> is that bad is that fucked i i i want to go as well it's uncomfortable here and we need to get treated shit i have a curfew fuck <laughs> yeah yeah treat treated yes also i have to get home okay mary your parents are never going to let you outside the house again if you go home right now with all with those wounds look i, I promised my dad that i'd be back and I mean, realistically, there are some fucked up things going on, so maybe it's a good thing that he's going to see me so banged up. I don't know. I doubt it's going to be a good thing. Maybe he can help. <sighs> okay, um... It's not like I'm bringing a bucket of weird rainbow fluid <laughs> into the house. It's This is for research purposes, all right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. Uh, look, there's an infirmary back at the bunker. Maybe you could just spend a little bit of time there and be back by the curfew? I mean, at this point, I don't even know what time it is back in town. I have a feeling I'm going to be late. Well, how about we just start walking and we'll figure things out. As we go. I'm heading back towards the bunker. You can come with me if you like, or... Go... See your parents flip out, I guess. Well, my dad. My mom's not even... Right. Sorry. No, you're good. <sighs> she's actually someone who I'd like to see. She's, the, see, she's a fucking nurse. <laughs> uh... You swear a lot. You don't swear enough. Hmm. This stick up your ass. But I do not. Uh, I have nothing up my ass, thank you. Look, maybe we can get coffee or something at some point. It's kind of nice knowing that there's someone else that gets it, but I I think I should go home. Yeah, let's just think about other things once several days have passed. Let's let's go. Okay. All right, so um, I would imagine you guys sort of head together up to a point uh, where your paths diverge. Um, Mary, you head back into town, and Digby, um, 
you back down into the bunker. And so we're going to flip a coin to see whose stuff we sort of track first. Okay. Call it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tails. <laughs> uh, uh, not tails. Fuck, shit. I mean, I mean, technically you're right. Let's see. And it is tails. All right. So we will do Alrighty. Artie stuff first. So cool, cool. Digby, as you approach the bunker, um, it's it's closed and locked. Okay. Weirdly enough, it's locked. And and you hear a muffled okay. voice are coming from below the surface. Uh, and you can tell that it is the voice Cal, the uh, bunker AI, muffled. So you can't really make out what he's saying. Uh, Cal? Digby's is i'm assuming attempts at opening the door are going to be unsuccessful yes <sighs> okay well um cal uh, it, can you somehow open the door please if, if you can hear me uh- that before the three of you had left the bunker um you had set a security code for re-entry oh my god did did we like write that down no i, I didn't write it <laughs> i know what it is i think oh, fuck. uh i might have written it <laughs> shoot <laughs> uh Digby walks up to the bunker and goes, Password. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Uh, I seem to have, like, written so many things down except for that. Uh. Uh. Barkin? Is it? No. Uh. Uh. Hold on. I'm gonna use the <laughs> one of my skills to say that I had wrote down on like a sticky note I put in my pocket or something. Yeah? You can roll for that. that you can roll for that. Alright. It, yeah. Oh, 11. Ooh, okay. So that Ooh. is that is a full success. You perfectly pick out from your pocket a i will i will dm you um what is on it oh thanks for the the message (laughs) bella oh my god was i right was i right uh i haven't received the message yet hold on i'm looking at it it's i (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) are you serious uh, <gasps> Digby walks up to the bunker and goes, <clears throat> "Turkey." No, it, it it goes. No, I don't. Uh, I don't want to say shit. <laughs> oh, did he... <laughs> this is this is genuinely what it was said as before we walked away. <laughs> it's so stupid. All right, Digby reaches into his pocket and pulls out. <laughs> A sticky note, and <sighs> why? <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> Digby looks around to make sure there is no one else in the vicinity. 
So you look around, um, and you don't notice anything, um, except for a suspiciously still coyote that is standing about a (laughs) hundred yards away, but it's just kind of staring at you and you can see it's, it's ears are perked up. Okay. (laughs) Uh, uh. God. All right, Digby is going to lie on his stomach above the bunker door and like cup his hands around his mouth and go <clears throat> gobble gobble my nuts. <laughs> and you hear a chink <laughs> and it pops open and you look over your shoulder over at the coyote and uh it's shaking its head at you and it runs off into the darkness diggy crawls into the bunker out of shame <laughs> <laughs> okay um you have your pail of monster blood um and cal chimes in and goes I knew that you'd get it eventually. It was just a matter of time. Cal, remind me tomorrow um, to change what the bunker password is. Well, unfortunately, the only one who has the executive authority to change the bunker password is Barkin. God damn it. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, great. Um, yeah, that's great. Where is Barkin? Oh, uh... Okay, so there's this really cool, um... Well, actually, uh... He, uh... Didn't quite survive the encounter. Well, with the Wendigo, he, he, uh... He did fine, but, um, something got him while we were occupied, and that something apparently isn't forgiving us, um, for for whatever reason, but we don't know what happened to him, but he's, um, he's gone. Barkin is dead? That's, that's right. Yep, this, uh... This complicates things, I assume? Barkin told me before you left that if he were to perish, that executive command would be given over to you. I didn't... I didn't... Think... I I didn't think that... Anyway, yes, you now have executive command over the bunker, all of its faculties, and anything that I can assist with. I am here for you. Okay. I don't think I'll be needing you right now, Cal, but I'll let you know when I do. All right, if you need me, just say my name, Cal. Calibrated artificial life form. And uh, you can sort of hear the speakers patter out as as he as his CPU goes to sleep. What are you doing now? Digby is going to head into the bunker's workshop and just set the pail down in a corner where he knows nothing's gonna touch it or flip it over. By chance. Okay. And, uh... Uh, Digby's heading to the infirmary. He's not... He's not doing too great. Uh... In terms of... Not being hurt. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um... So... I would say that the infirmary... Is the same case as the...
a, a bunch of rubbing alcohol, um, some pain medication, plenty of things. Um, but the heavy duty stuff is going to like knock you out for a amount of time. Like you're going to have to get some rest to heal all of this stuff up. You could be okay. in the process now, but could I like could Digby um just do what he can to like try and patch himself up and when it comes to like the stuff that'll knock him out, could he ask like Cal to like just like monitor monitor him while he's zonked out? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the um, All right. we'll say that one of the things, one of the accommodations of this infirmary is like a little a little medical bed um, that has like a heartbeat monitor and all that sort of stuff. For when you're right. zooted. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what to do. <laughs> Well, like, um, you could apply some basic first aid, just rubbing alcohol under the bandages and um, sort of take some pain medication and go along with your scene, or you could go to sleep and start the recovery process. You're not going to get any negative things taken away from you by performing any actions in a harmed state. As as you are okay. stable, you are stable right now. You have been stabilized. Yeah. You're just kind of right. like uh, in pain. Yeah, Digby walks over to whatever is storing the pain meds and takes a couple. Um, he's a little hesitant on applying the rubbing alcohol he's not sure if he could do it himself given um he, he's not he doesn't I have that much willpower in at the moment um <clears throat> uh all right cal yes i'm i could you make sure I'm not like could you make sure I don't die while I'm on this uh monitor here I I just want to sleep all right sir I will I'm, I'm be sorry happy to do sure. that for you I'm sorry, Quentin. Can you describe like what this is? Is is there just like a, a bed with like a, a? I let me see. Let me see if I can pull up a reference. Medical bed. So it is a one of. Oh, yes, this is this is perfect. This is perfect. Let me see if I can just copy the image and then put that in imagery. Ba -ba -bam. It's a one of these babies. Yippee. <laughs> um, All right. Um, yeah. I wonder if an IV would be. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, for the scene, like an IV isn't necessarily necessary since what? you don't have like a nutrition deficiency or anything yeah. that needs to be pumped into your body. It's mostly just like physical recovery. You don't have any. Yeah, you're not recovering from any poison or or any of that okay. stuff. It's just you got gashed up real bad. Digby's gonna. Uh, <laughs> let's say, um, hmm, how is he going to make himself fall asleep? Uh, NyQuil, keep the bad <laughs> dreams out. I was just about to say NyQuil. <laughs> Maybe there's just so some, like, on a table next to the, all right, uh, bed. All right, maybe take some of that and does his best 
to get some sleep. All right. Um, as Digby falls wistfully to sleep, roll me, roll me just a flat two d six. Bruh. Okay, four total. <laughs> so in your dream, in your unconscious mind, you're you're very aware. Uh, and you're just sort of sitting in this black space, this this inky blackness around you. And you can see visions, images sort of come to mind. The text written in blood near the body, the body of the Wendigo in its own weird, bloody substance. All of the different pieces of the puzzle all of the different clues as to what could be really going on in this town. All of them completely disconnected from one another. And so I will give you the ability to kind of think through some things in an assisted fashion. Um, but if okay. you get too far away from connecting things together, then you you then, wait, then you fall into like a deeper sleep and All right. stop dreaming. All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, so I'm just like thinking. Yeah, just thinking. You're in a Sherlock Holmes-esque mind palace. All right, Digby's in the big easy chair with a pipe <laughs> and um, takes a big puff of it. <sighs> hmm. I feel like Barkin had more. To tell us about this place. Several things. I just don't. I really just don't understand. First of all that. House. I. Barely remember if that was real or not. It felt real. It's it's got. It's got. To have some. Connection to. Here. Right. It, I. It's got that rainbow liquid thing. So in your mind, a vision pops up of you walking back in the, in the real world to the very same estate, but the interior and the exterior being very different. It, all signs point to this being a very real world location. Um, that exists, the Schaefer Estate. You just being in some sort of uh, variant version of it. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you one thing. Um, so, Mary and Digby didn't actually die, per se, in that house? Or was that, like, the... So was that was that one of the the things that dealt with time to summarize like, to summarize the events of what happened was you and Mary were having a really weird day neither of you remembered each other and then individually you were both killed by different things um okay. you were pushed out of the window and she was torn asunder by what seemed to be the wind to go and was later mm -hmm confirmed to be the entity uh stalking you in the estate okay and so you guys ended up back in the estate you did all of your weird stuff there was things that seemed more magical and fantastical you had your encounters with the beast um and then you guys walked through a door and from your perspective uh you remembered that whatever state that you were in was not real per se 
uh, more of a fantastical illusion as all of your other memories came back from before. And that's when you guys resumed hunting the Wendigo that you remembered afterwards had already taken place. So whatever had happened, whatever had occurred, um, put you back before the events of the initial monster hunt that you guys had okay. played out. Something something about this place is a sense of time. There's, there, there's nothing right here. It, the house has something to do with it. I know that, but I'm kind of afraid to look at that house again, I feel like I I could be risking something by going back there. I'm really not sure what that was all about. I would ask Barkin if if he were still here. There is the matter of Barkin. What killed him? We we dealt with the Wendigo, and it couldn't have just like been at two, been in two places at once. So suddenly, you are transported back to the site of Barkin's um, corpse, and I will give you the opportunity to investigate a mystery. All right. I'm going to roll for that. Okay. Okay, 13. Fuck yeah. Um that's that's crazy. So, on a 13 investigative mystery, um you are able to ask whatever question. Whatever question. Whatever question you'd like. Wow. And I will allow you, since it since it is a fucking thirteen, I will allow you to ask two of the questions and then an additional third question of your own choosing. Okay, sounds good. I think first of all, Digby would like to know if there's anything being concealed here. So as you look around, um, at the scene of this crime, you can see underneath a rock over to the right of Barkin's corpse is what looks to be some sort of bloody piece of it, it almost looks like metal just just like a a weird piece of sharp metal um that has blood on the sharpened end of it hmm all right let's go with let's go with where did it go whatever attacked Barkin. So, casting your eyes back down to the ground, uh, you can see a set of prints. Um, They are sort of... They go back down the way that you came, so only a couple of them are clear. Uh, But they look to be these large monstrous around 14 inch paw um with this almost like a talon like thing where there is one in the back and then four in the front and those are the impressions that you're getting but it does seem to be bipedal Let's see and it is heading back down in the direction that you guys came oh okay all right um this last question, do you think, I don't know if it's like too much to ask, Okay. but would would Digby be able to find out if it was Barkin or something else that wrote the I Won't Forgive You? Yes, you can. Um, so a couple of things will help you put this together. First things first, you gaze over towards his arm that had been cut off. Uh... You examine the fingerprints um, on the arm as they are facing up. 
and you can tell that there is no blood on them. Uh, it is the same for the other hand. Uh, and you can tell also that this was written with a left arm. Uh, just sort of, you can tell by the lettering and the way that it sort of trails off to one end. Okay. Uh, and it was not written desperately. It was written intentionally. Uh, the lettering is precise and clean. Okay. Yeah. That's that's good to know. All right. And then as you ask that question, you have a, a multitude of answers that kind of let your consciousness fall to rest as you succumb to that void and you are deeply and fastly asleep or quickly fuck me damn it <laughs> um, I love when it, love it when I go fastly to sleep <laughs> oh, welcome back to the mid-roll ladies and gentlemen uh, this is your host, Quentin Small, here to tell you a little bits of bits and bobs about our podcast, uh, which I hope you're invested in as you're already halfway through it. Um, okay, a little bit of housekeeping stuff. We are starting our new major arc, uh, Arc 2. I don't know what I'm going to name Arc 1, but I'm going to come up with a title for it. It's going to be very adventure zony, sort of broken up into chapters. Each, each with their own individual names. Uh, but we are headed straight forward into Arc 2. This episode and the next episode are intermediary. Um, and when we do officially start our secondary arc, hopefully we will have a new addition to our cast. Uh, we just put out a casting call, and um, we're looking for a third right now so a third a third player uh we got a couple great submissions so far uh it's going great um in terms of other things i would like to of course thank our artists and musicians um thank you club moses dr vera uh incline miguel uh ruby vgm tom 998 um and then our artists bella and uh, Paluve for your awesome additions to our show. We actually are in talks with a musician right now um, to sort of work on the project uh, as like more of a go-to rather than per commission. Well, it's going to be commission. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay him, but it's going to be like a direct partnership. We're going to work on it together. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. Our little our little team, our little ragtag group is growing every single day, and I could not be more excited for that. And I could not be more excited for our audience who are getting all of this amazing content. Speaking of amazing content, I'm going to do a little bit of a shout out to our Patreon, patreon.com slash imaginots. Uh, it's a wonderful place where we do wonderful things. Um... I am going to make a little revision to the Patreon. Uh, our after show we call Imagine Notes is not very engaging. Uh, I have scrubbed all of the episodes of Imagine Notes uh, thus far because they are bad, and I'm going to pitch a couple of new ideas to the cast about what we can do. Um, moving forward, I have an idea where we are going to do a listen back through from episode one, uh, and go and do like an after show commentary on that. Um, and just sort of do like a delayed afterthoughts, um, thing, because we do have insider background knowledge, which, which is what we want to give to you and express to you. Um, but I want to do it in a more interesting, entertaining fashion than just us, sitting there theorizing over the things that were going on in our heads at the time. Um, of course, my notes are up there. Um, so that's all something to look forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of that behind, behind the scenes content. Of course, if you do $10, uh, you will be shouted out in episodes. 
uh, during the mid-roll, which is here, or I might do it at the end. Depends on how I'm editing the episode. Um, if there's a segment at the end, which I'm going to do a lot more, um, then it will be in the mid-roll. But if it's not, then it will be a little like credit scroll at the end. Um, yeah, but that's all the stuff that I wanted to go over during this episode's mid-roll. And I am so, so incredibly happy about the things that we have cooking up now. It's, it's so good, and I am looking forward to everything so much. I hope you have a great time with the rest of the episode. Thank you for listening, and let's get back to it. Yes, so we will cut over to Mary. Yeah. So, Mary, you are approaching the border of Nirvana. Uh, to set the scene for you, the moon is full and overhead, shining down on your escapade here. Uh, unfortunately, using common sense, that does mean that it's probably later than nine o'clock or whenever your curfew was. Well, it, it wasn't quite a curfew. I just have been saying that because I was like, I'll be back in the morning. Oh, yeah, that's also true. Um, because uh, I wasn't supposed to leave the house at no, all. No, in no way, shape, or form. Nope. Uh, and so, yeah, you're just standing outside of the town. Um, the town border is right there. Would you like to enter? Yes, I think so. As you put your good foot inside your mind begins to react in some way, shape, or form. And you can hear a voice in the back of your mind going, Mary, you know oh. it's not wise to go back in there right now. Would you shut the fuck up? I just had to bury my friend, uh, adult adjacent individual, that I was close with. You knew him for literally a day. Time's weird, man. That's, that's very Secondly, true. secondly, okay. I'm not going to be taking orders from a fucking voice in my head anymore. I think you're done. Oh, oh, you, th you think I'm done? And she just keeps going. She just keeps walking. So uh, I don't think I described it very well. When you walk into the town, you're you're like repelled by this mounting pressure in your mind. Oh, motherfucker. And the voice goes, Mary, there is a couple of very good reasons why you shouldn't go back in there right now. Number one is your fucking father who has a good chance of throwing you in a prison cell. And what happens if you are out of commission like that and another thing attacks? He's not throwing me in a prison cell. One, you clearly don't know my dad or my life. Sure, okay. Yes, he could be mad, but technically I was just grounded, and clearly I can get out. You know what? You can make your own decisions, and you can also be responsible for your own consequences. So, whatever ends up happening in there, you are responsible for. You didn't take my advice. You didn't listen to a word I said. Yeah, because you've kept me real safe. I'm pretty sure I just died. You just died? Like, a day ago. A day ago in what sense? The metaphorical sense? In conscious diametrics to your current timeline to the timeline of the world we don't fucking know Dave, what's going on would you please just let me go 
Personally, I think that we should be smarter about this, but no. Yes, you are allowed to make your own decisions. And you can hear his consciousness sort of fade out of the back of your mind. Am I able to step into the town now? Yes, yes you are. Okie dokie. Uh, so where do you head first? Well, okay. Can I get any gauge on what time it is? Um, when you step in to the town... It's, it's night. Um, make a sharp roll. Uh, I got a nine. Nine's good. Uh, nine is a success. So you look up at the sky and notice it's still dark, uh, but you can tell that the moon is in a completely different spot in the sky and also in a completely different phase. Whereas it's full outside of the town, it's in a crescent position inside. So it's been days? You can tell when you left the town, it was in a similar crescent position. Okay, because I was going to say, hold up. I thought I'd at least be in within a 24-hour window, but cool. Um... Uh, there's nowhere to head but home at this point. Okay. That's where she goes. All right. So as you approach your house, you can see your father has his car parked in the driveway, but he also has, uh, he has his police car there. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, the lights aren't on. Uh, it seems to be off. Uh, but yeah. You can you can tell that he's kind of in work mode right now. As she walks up the driveway, she's going shit 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 shit. Um, yeah. So she goes to find the key. It's definitely not under the mat because that's not safe. He has it like configured under like a very specific flower pot because he's like, I'll be damned if they'll find the most. You know what I mean? Like he's just a very cautious person. So she grabs the spare key. Uh, and unlocks the door. It is quiet when you enter your home. Fuck. Um, she kind of knocks at the door frame as she's walking in, and she goes, Uh, Dad? You get, you um, get no response. Fuck. Okay, um, she starts looking through rooms. Well, first, d she goes to where she left the note. Did he see it? Like, has it moved? Uh, the note is not there. Okay. He got it. Um, yeah, so she starts going through rooms. Um, the kitchen, good. Uh, are there any rooms you would prioritize? Or are you just, like, going through all of them randomly? She'd, she'd peek in the living room for a second. And then she'd go to his room. You are in his room sort of looking through stuff y you notice something as soon as you walk in you notice a couple of things first things first um as you walk in the door the carpet is wet and also as you look to the right um your father's room is this one I sort of like a median uh, queen sized bed with uh his one nightstand to the side with a couple of couple of couple of books, couple of uh he's he's been always been more of like a comedy novel guy. Um, which is weird. Like a lot of people don't read purely comedic novels. Um but he's always liked them. However, his bathroom the, the light in there is on. And you can also see water streaming out from underneath the door. 
Oh, shit. Uh, Dad? And she starts banging on the door. The door is locked and you get no response. Fuck. Um, can she try to bust it down? Uh, roll kick some ass. This is gonna be interesting because she's not a very large individual, but she is freaked out. So she, I got a 10. Um, so on a 10, yeah, you fucking break it down just fine. Uh, it comes down. You you broke the lock on the door, um, so the door handle just kind of falls off. It doesn't come off its hinges or anything. It just sort of has that yeah. broken uh, locking mechanism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the scene that is revealed to you uh, is your father uh, submerged in a tub completely clothed in his work uniform um, with his head underneath the water. And you can see um, a bottle of pills that have kind of been sprawled out across the floor. Uh, oh my god. Um, okay. <laughs> so... What do I do to try and pull him out? Is that another kick some ass? Uh, I'd say act under pressure. Okay. This whole time she's going, no, 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 no. That's an eight. Uh, yeah. You managed to get his head above, um, but you can tell that he's choking. His, his lungs are full of water. You don't have his body out, though, which is the problem. You don't have his body out, you only have his head out, and this tub is still full of water. So if you let go of his head, he will just go back underneath. But it almost doesn't make any difference because his lungs are still full of water. Fuck. Okay. Um, so she's going to climb in the bathtub and kind of try to use her body weight to push him up so his head just is above the water while she tries to like start applying compression. To his chest. Okay. She's totally freaking the fuck out, but there's not a lot of room for fucking around, and she knows that. Give us another act under pressure. Typing in these commands is an act under pressure in of itself. Fuck! Fuck, 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 fuck. So, the thing that happens uh, is as you try to sort of lift him he actually like slips out of your hands um and his head like connects with the side of the tub no and you can see um blood starting to mix with the water shit okay um she's going to go back to having trying to grab his head and pull him up above the water um, and if there's any way, she's going to try and get her phone out at some point and call somebody. Do what? 911? I mean, whoever. Yeah, yeah, 911. Okay. Um, as you dial in 911, uh, it connects. And you hear a female voice on the other end of the phone go, Hello? Uh, wh what do you need? There's not fucking time my dad's in the fucking bathtub and I think he overdosed on something and he's not breathing and I dropped his head and he's waiting now. Mary? Oh. Fuck. Yes, yes, yes. There's something wrong with my dad. The, the voice on the other end of the phone sounds vaguely, not vaguely familiar, very specifically familiar, but in the moment you can't really place your finger on it and you can hear the voice go um it, it is it is going to be all okay i i am i am nearby i i will i will come over no we fucking need medical attention right now no i, I yeah, yeah 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 right no, now I get that. um poof, uh i don't i don't know how to how to react to that um uh Damn it! I I, I I wish I was there. I, I I wish I was closer. Fuck! Okay, get here, please. Who am I talking to? Mary, it's it's your mom. Mom? Yeah. Yeah. 
Why, why, why did you, why did you call me? Why? No, no, I went to call the cops. Shit, I, I need you, I need you to call an ambulance. Mary, I, I need you to, I, I really just, listen, this is a lot you're throwing at me right now. If everything you say is true, we need to do something immediately. So I want you to go back to your dad because there is something that you can do right in this very moment. Okay? Can you do that for me? Okay. Okay. Do you turn around? Yeah, I mean, I guess I do turn back to him. There's nothing there. It's an empty tub. I immediately hang up on whoever that was. Um, she gets up and starts fucking looking through all of the rooms at this point. There's no more wetness on the carpet, I'm assuming? No. No more wetness. Okay, she runs back to the kitchen. Is the note still not there? Uh, the note is still not there. Um, but as you run by the kitchen, you can see your father standing there with the note in his hands. Oh my god. Dad? Mary, what what the fuck is this? You're okay? Yeah, I... Yes, of course I <laughs> Are you all right? Oh my god. His face before was angry. Like looking at it once you you th- would figure that there was not a single thing that could shake him out of that mood. But as he's looking at you right now, you can see that completely melt away and he sort of just floats over to your side and he says Baby, are you are you okay? No. 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 No, hey, hey, what's going on? I I How long have you been downstairs? Honey, I've been I've been waiting for you for around like 2 hours. I know, I know. I was trying to get back. <laughs> okay. I no, no, I I saw you in the bathtub. No, hey. With those pills, and I called, and I tried calling an ambulance. Pills? Mom picked up, but it wasn't Mom. No, yeah. Mary, of course it wasn't. Mary, please sit down. We need to talk. Honestly, need to talk. If you just, just sit down with me for a little bit, I'll make you something to drink. We will just sit here and talk. Does that sound okay? Yeah. (laughs) That sounds okay. All right. So you, he kind of takes you over and sits you down um, in a chair. There's just sort of like a table in the kitchen. You guys don't have a a dining room. Um, No. It's a little like four person square table. Um, Yeah. And he's in the kitchen, and he takes a pot of boiling water, and he makes, like, a little quick hot chocolate packet, mixes that up with the water, and he sets it down in front of you. And he says, so you said something about pills? No, no, not me. I I came back home, and, and I, when I went up to your room to look for you... <laughs> The, you were in the bathtub and 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 you there was this pill bottle and you were under underwater and I thought you were I thought you were dying All right, Mary. Where have you been? Please. Please just please just tell me that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um I might have left town. You left town to uh, to go to go where with with who? With my friends. Your your friends from school? No, other friends, and we went to the quarry. <laughs> uh, uh, and some pretty fucked up things happened. S- some some pretty some pretty fucked up things. Did did anything? Was anybody hurt? Well, clearly, Dad, I'm not doing too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you look, you look pretty, 
You look pretty torn up. I what what happened? I got into a fight. Into a a fight with a with a wild animal. Your 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 clothes are torn and there's claw marks taken out of you. And I think it was the same thing that killed those people a couple days ago. Wait, the pe- the people we've been investigating? Yeah. So you're telling me that. How did it did it jump out at you? Did it uh, what what was it? I think there's something I have to tell you, and I don't want you to freak out. And I know you're going to freak out, but can you promise to at least try to like minimally freak out? I, I will. I will promise you that I will try and freak out the the le- the least amount I can muster. I think there's something wrong with me. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? I don't know. Like... I can do some pretty weird things with my brain, I think. All right. So you know you know how strange the thing that you just said to me sounds out of context, right? Yeah, I know. I don't know. You've worked with some weird not right people things. I don't know. I thought you'd get it. I, I, I well I need you to describe it to me a little bit more. What what specifically? If I get really frustrated Things get messed up <laughs> pretty bad. Like I end up hurting people. Y- you are breaking things. You and I don't mean to. You hurt people and you break things, and I, I, when you get s- stressed out. But but no, yeah, but not with my hands. Like it just happens. I I don't. And if I were to focus really hard right now, I'd be able to see. Like, you, but not you, this glowing ball version of you. And I did it with the librarian the other day, um, and it was really weird. Y- you hurt the librarian? No, 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 no. I saw her glowing version of herself. So, for, y- for this to make any sort of sense, I want you to make a charm, just a flat charm. Oh, flat without any of the stuff. No, 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 not not without oh, any oh, of the like modifiers. I did. Just, just like this isn't a manipulate somebody. I got you. I got an eight. He believes that there is. He believes that you are not lying to him, and genuinely believe the things that you are saying. And so he goes, Mary. I want you to try and tell me in the clearest way you possibly can from the beginning of it all with all of the details that you can muster exactly what happened tonight tonight well tonight um be- before where you've been what you've been doing just just let's start with tonight what happened tonight i went with my friends to the quarry because we wanted something bad was going to happen to the town and if we told everyone in the town that something bad was going to happen it would get worse what in the hell do you mean you're still dancing around details i'm being about as clear as i can who are these people that you were with um is it too late to save friends from school Y- yes, it is too late to save friends from school. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the work of Digby Bush? Mary, yes, I am familiar with Mr. Bush. Why? So, when I said that I was going to go study, 
I wasn't technically lying because I was studying certain things, but I was going with him to the quarry to get a closer look at the thing that had to do with the people that you were investigating. And before you cop out, literally, it was my choice and I had every opportunity to not go. But I couldn't stay here knowing that everything was going to go bad. So you are telling me that Digby Bush, the author who I negotiated with to try and be an associate on this investigation, took my daughter to go and do... What? He didn't take me. He coerced you into doing a sovereign investigation behind my and the entire department's back? It wasn't an investigation. We ended it. You went and killed an animal and he took you to do that? It wasn't an animal. Then what in the fuck was it? Look, I understand where this might be confusing, but I swear to God, if you want to go with me back to the quarry, I can show you the corpse of the thing. I am not going a goddamn place with you right now. Dad. You asked me to tell you the truth. Then tell me exactly what the fuck you saw out there. I saw a fucking creature. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe it without you not believing me. Uh, And I don't know how to describe it without showing you. a, 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 a A creature? Yes. What, what, what kind, what kind of, and you can see his eyes start to, they kind of have a glossy look to them. Like he's, he's looking at you, but he's kind of looking over your shoulder. It's, it's, it's like he's in a trance like state and he says, a a a a a, cre- a, cre- a creature like not 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 something not something not something nor- normal so it wasn't a it wasn't a dad, it wasn't a dad, bear dad. and it wasn't a dad, person dad, dad, a, cr- dad. A, cr- a, cr- a creature hey and you can do weird stuff with your with your with your with your with your mind you can hurt people with your I'm on drugs dad you can see as soon as you say that his eyes clear up and he goes you're what I didn't want to tell you but I went with some friends to go do drugs at the quarry and a bear came and scratched me roll a manipulate I came that's a six (laughs) that counts as a miss unfortunately and he goes you you weren't you weren't lying You weren't lying. There really is something out there. And this glossy look returns, except it's highlighted by his eyes going bloodshot. And and, and he goes, I I, I can't. I I, I, no. Ow. 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 And hang on. on. um, Listen to me. His his eyes go completely white and he just falls back. Fuck. Like he's unconscious, or I can keep trying to fix it. He's convulsing on the ground. Oh my god. Um. So this time I'm going to very intentionally look at my phone. Okay. And I am going to dial the numbers nine, one, one into my phone. Okay. You can hear the phone ringing, um, and you can hear somebody pick up on the other line. Hello. Mary, this is why we don't go back into town. 
Ah, oh, for fuck's sake! And I try to hang up the phone. Uh, the phone, the phone stays on. Ugh! I throw the phone across the room. That, that was more for effect, Mary. I... I don't give a shit. I'm going to walk over and try to fill a glass with water to pour it on his head. You're going to pour a glass of water I'm going to wake him up! Listen, do you want me to put him to sleep? No! What?! No, not like, not like kill him, but like... I don't fucking trust you! You would technically be doing it, but do you want me to help you put him to sleep? What would happen then? How would he wake up? Uh, He would wake up when he wakes up, but he's currently in a fucking state right now. How long is it going to take for him to wake up? And don't bullshit me. Until you decide to wake him up, or his body naturally wakes up. And when I decide, he'll be okay. He won't be, like, super good. He'll probably need, like, hospitalization. His body in mind has been under an extreme amount of stress, and it's causing a very physical reaction. But it will cease. The damage that's been done will not be undone, but it will not continue to be done, if that makes any sense. And when he wakes up... I don't know, I can lie and say it was drugs. He might. He may believe you. But... Uh, and you made a ton of shitty decisions here. You dragged Digby into this. You put our entire operation at risk. You put your father's life at risk. He's my dad. Was I not supposed to say anything? I think we've learned a lesson here. I am in your corner. So when I tell you to do something... The wisest decision is to listen to my counsel. Okay. Uh, roll plus weird. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, you just sort of like, however you want this to sort of be made manifest, you can describe it. I want to sit next to him on the ground where he's like having a seizure or whatever. Um and just give him a hug. And, I don't know, magic through osmosis or something. As you sort of squeeze him um, in your arms, he's still convulsing, but you can feel his body instantly fall numb. And and he goes limp. I want to go back to my phone and actually call an ambulance if he can actually get to the hospital. Okay. If that's okay. All right. If I can no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. use my phone. Um, yeah, no, you dial the number and you speak to an EMT. Um, and somebody comes down from the clinic in, in an ambulance and takes him in a gurney. And as he is being... Dr- would you be in the ambulance with him? No. Okay. As you watch it drive away, you can see him shoot up in the back of the ambulance let's say that there's like a little window and mouth something to you and then fall right back down and um roll plus sharp to see if you can tell what he said it's a seven okay so with that you can get two of the three words um he said i you can't make out the second word and then you and the ambulance drives away. 